what's the delay due to, do you think? Well, mainly the delays because the Americans don't seem to agree what Netanyahu think, or at least thought they agreed, and also his divisions with with his own with his own government, with Benny Gantz about the scope of the of the annexation, the timing of the annexation. He managed to make almost everyone unhappy. I think it's 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 a clear case of lack of judgment by Netanyahu. And, and lack of leadership, and he managed to get the worst of, of, of everything. He got the international community focusing on his attempt to flagrantly violate international law and, and, and annex an occupied territory, endangering the, the stability of the Palestinian Authority that Israel needs for security cooperation and other areas of, of, of cooperation. Uh, Jordan, Jordan is very much upset, and there is a real risk. The rest of the region is 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 thinking what, how should they respond to that? The EU already, some countries, uh, and announced their condemnation. Thousands of parliamentarians, European, condemned it, and the annexation hasn't happened. So, in this sense, you really wonder what Netanyahu is thinking. To what extent do his annexation plans align with the Trump administration's peace plan? Well, it's, it's, it's double confusion here because no one knows what exactly Trump administration and the plan is, is, is searching or, or looking for. And the same the annexation because, you know, does the annexation include the Jordan Valley or not? We don't know. Is it a symbolic one of few settlements like in Gush Etzion or Maale Adumi? or maybe more than this, it's very unclear. The maps are, that's exactly what they are negotiating. And, and, and sadly, not with the Palestinians, they are negotiating this kind of drawing, drawing borders with the Americans, not with, with the Palestinians. And the scope will also mean something about how the response is going to be, but it's also the principle of annexing unilaterally a piece of land that was occupied back in 67 and not through you know, agreement of borders with the Palestinians. So when it happens, if it happens, what would annexation change in reality on the ground? The, in principle, Israel is in complete control of the 30 percent that we think that the plan is to annex or part of it, including the Jordan uh, River. But symbolically, in terms of applying the Israel law, declaring that this is, even the Israeli call it disputed, not occupied, but they, they ending unilaterally this dispute and say, there is no dispute anymore, we declared it's ours, which means the two-state solution is become even less viable than it was, was before. It will actually will will force the region to respond to that also probably the european union you know it might also have a silver lining that the international uh, community will understand that it might take a stand for instance recognition of also unilaterally of a palestinian state put more pressure for a, a, a viable peace process but for now it can also end with violence between the israel palestine maybe a third intifada so there there grave implication potentially for such a unilateral declaration in complete violation of international law. Now, where would Netanyahu be without U.S. support? And might a change in the White House uh, make a significant difference, do you think? Even the settlers, by the way, think they put the kind of uh, imaginary uh, deadline, say, if it's not going to happen until the 15th of July, it's not going to happen. I don't know if this is correct or not. But everyone understands that the timeline, the window of opportunity for this terrible plan is, 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 is closing. Because in three months' time, by 3rd of November, their election, uh, the chances of uh, Trump getting back into the White House seems slimmer than if they were five, six months ago. And, and, and Joe Biden, the presumptive uh, Democrat, a Democratic nominee already said it is against it. You have 200 Congress people already signed against it. Someone like Bernie Saunders even suggested with other members of the Congress that, that the United States should stop military cooperation with Israel. So in, in this sense, the relation with the United States is crucial. Comes November, and if Joe Biden 
is is elected, I think this will change the, the, the all the idea of annexation, and now it's uh, affect the relations with the major Israeli ally. And what about on the Palestinian side? You mentioned Jordan before. Who is still very strongly behind the, the Palestinians? Well, I think that one of the issues the Palestinians are in complete disarray, and it's almost interesting to see that the kind of almost the apathy and many Palestinians say it doesn't change what happens uh, on the ground. We are under occupation, whether it's area A, B, and C, the Israelis are taking liberties in every part of, of the West uh, right now. Uh, the, the Palestinian uh, leadership already said they are not committed to any of the agreements from Oslo onwards. They don't. They stop the military, the security cooperation with that. And maybe at one point or another, they will end the entire responsibility, which is the responsibility of the occupier, uh, to Israel to look after the after the population. But obviously, the the division between the Hamas and, and the Fatah between Gaza and the West Bank doesn't help. The issue of succession among the Palestinian leadership is is not helping uh, their, their case. But in principle. The entire, most of the international community support them, but they not support them in a proactive way that actually helps them to avoid what Israel is doing right now.